Good morning. Happy Easter. Welcome to worship here at St. John's, whether you're with us on site today or whether you're with us online. What a beginning. Just a great, a great day and a great celebration. I have just a few announcements for us before we continue with our worship. The rose on the communion table this morning is in memory of Ellen Bartholomew. Ellen joined the triumphant and uh, heavenly host last Sunday evening. Our thoughts are with her family and our prayers continue for them. Also today, communion is going to be slightly different than what you're used to seeing. We will have communion, but the communion ushers will be serving it um, starting from the rear of the sanctuary. So don't fret if you're like, where's communion? It's back there. Uh, if you didn't see it, we will have it. Also, um, because of our um, a setup this morning, the offering uh, plates are also at the aisles when you came in, uh, rather than um, having you bring your offerings forward today. Uh, a thank you to all of our musicians, um, our special musicians, our regular musicians. Thank you to our tech crew and to our office staff who have put in a lot, a lot, a lot, a highly technical term, a lot of hours uh, in helping worship be as amazing as it's going to be today. So thank you to all of those folks. And now let us continue with our worship. I'd like to add my good morning and happy Easter to all of you. I'll be your lay reader this morning. My name is Linda Linton. Please join in our gathering in worship by reading the bold and underlined texts in unison. Jesus the Christ, we greet you. Your hands still have holes in them. Your feet are wet from the dew. And with the memory of our names undimmed by three days of death, you meet us risen from the grave. We fail to understand how. We puzzle at the reason why. But you have come not to answer our questions, but to show us your face. You are alive, and the world can rejoice again. Hallelujah. Amen.
Our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Peter has been invited to the house of Cornelius, who has gathered his relatives and closest friends. Listen now for the word of God. Then Peter began to speak to them, saying, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Our second reading today is from Paul, Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which you also stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he also appeared to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The final scripture lesson for today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. Please join me in reading the bold and underlined text. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is a place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And all that had been commanded them, they told briefly to those around Peter. And afterward, Jesus himself sent out through them 
from east to west the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. Here end the readings for this Easter morning. May God provide wisdom as we cherish these words in our hearts. I'd like to invite the Sunshine Singers to please come forward. Good morning, St. John GCC. We um, would like to ask you if you would sing with us during the course of this song, and we would like to wish you a happy Easter from the Sunshine Singers. Just keeps getting better. 
Please pray with me. As we hear your word this day, as we celebrate the resurrection, as we share this wonder together, be with us. O Lord, send your spirit upon us and grant us your wisdom. Amen. So I want to start, I want you to think Hallmark movies. I want you to think particularly about Hallmark Christmas movies. I did not fall and hit my head. I, I do know this is Easter. I know that Hallmark Christmas movies are another holiday. But I want you to think about Hallmark Christmas movies, and in particular, maybe you've seen the Hallmark Christmas movie, It's Christmas, comma, Eve. Leanne Rimes is in that Hallmark movie. Right? She's the, the female lead, and her name is Eve, hence the comma Eve, right? And so in this movie, she, is, uh, she comes home to her hometown as the interim superintendent for the school district to help the school district out and she's got to assess all the programs because surprise surprise they're having budget difficulties and all that but anyway without telling you the whole movie when she was younger I don't really remember I don't know if it's explicit in the movie or not but when she was younger her dad wrote music and she would sing and her dad was writing her a Christmas song and he died and didn't get a chance to finish the song. And when her dad died, she stopped singing. Okay, and then, of course, now remembering, this is the Hallmark movie, right? The handsome, single dad music teacher right? <laughs> comes riding into the, the picture, so to speak, and as a Christmas present for her, he writes an ending to the song. And because it's a Hallmark movie, she sings again. I, I won't tell you the rest, but I, I want you to kind of think of that and then think about the last time you finished someone else's work. And how often do you finish someone else's work? If... if Suppose that there's a tailor or a seamstress who's making a shirt and it has everything except the collar and the buttons and the cuffs. Okay. Can you finish the shirt? Right. Do, you, do you pick up the work and finish the shirt? Or, or let's say that your neighbor is restoring a 68 Ford Mustang. Okay, And, and, and your neighbor's about... 66% of the way through it and she couldn't finish it. Can you finish restoring the Mustang and would you finish the work? Or maybe someone wrote half a song and you come across the score. Could you pick it up and finish the work? Someone writing a story. And it's almost done but it's not quite done. Are you able to pick up the story and finish the story? You have an experience of God. Are you able to tell the story? To finish the story? The Gospel of Mark Many biblical scholars believe that the Gospel of Mark ended differently than what even Linda read. They believe that it ended and the women were terrified and they told no one and. It ends there on the word gar, which can be translated as either for or and. So many biblical scholars believe that that's where Mark intended the story to end with a, uh, you know, I guess if you're one of those English geeks, a dangling conjunction or, or it's not a dangling participle. I always goof those up in school anyway, but, right. And Mark left it there kind of hanging out and they were terrified and they ran away and... 
I wonder why he did that. Those same biblical scholars basically agree that the rest of the Gospel of Mark as we have it, there, there may be a verse or two beyond what Linda read, was put there by a later editor in order to conform to the other Gospels so that all four Gospels had appearances of the resurrected Jesus, had Jesus having conversations with disciples or others so that they could all give witness to and some proof, if you will, of the risen Christ. But if indeed Mark's intent was to leave us wondering, we have to ask ourselves why. Serene Jones, a uh, theologian and scholar, in starting to address that question said, did you ever notice that none of the headliners were there? None of the stars of the show prior to the crucifixion accompanied the women to the tomb. The women were going to the tomb. Right? They had bought spices to anoint Jesus' body, and their biggest concern was, how are we going to roll away this huge rock? How are we going to move it? And they're, they're puzzling that the whole way there, and they get there, and, and they're expecting a dead Jesus. Everybody was. For everyone else, the headliners and everyone else, the story was over. He was crucified. He was put in a tomb. It was the end. They were going to finish up and they get there and the tomb's empty and there's a young man, we'll assume a, an angel, a messenger of God, however Mark wanted us to understand that, is sitting there and says to these women, you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, he's not here. Look, this is where they laid him. He's not there. He's gone ahead of you as he said he would. And for fear and amazement, the women ran from the tomb and. Gail O'Day, another commentator and scholar, also talks about that. And she said, is it any wonder that they weren't able to say anything because everywhere else in the Bible where there's a theophany, for those of you who are not Greek or, or religious language geeks, theophany is when God appears to someone and someone experiences God appearing to them. That's called the theophany. So these women had a theophany of God through an angel. And, and Gail O'Day says, it is not uncommon at all. In fact, in every other instance in the Bible where there's a theophany, the reaction is terror and amazement. And people can't speak, and they can't immediately talk about the experience they've just had because they're in awe. But we have to assume that the women at some point told someone, or we might not have the story. I think what Mark intended was that Jesus intends to use people. And I don't mean that Jesus intends to use people in a manipulative sense for personal gain or whatever, but Jesus intends to use people to tell the rest of the story, to pick up the unfinished work. And not just as a story in the past. Think about how you experience things and how you uh, come to believe certain things. You might come to believe certain things if you read about it in a book or see it on the news or find it in the internet. But chances are you're much more likely to believe something if you've had a personal experience with someone who had a personal experience with the thing that they're telling you about or someone who has has gone through this event and they want to make sure that you know it and that there's this rich detail, right? I don't think that Jesus came to this earth so that you and I could have a spiritual experience. I don't think that Jesus came to this earth 
to spawn an industry of religious goods and services. I don't think that Jesus came to this earth so that a great book could be written called The Greatest Story Ever Told. I think Jesus came to this earth to embody God's love and I think Jesus returned as the resurrected Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit to keep the story going. I don't think that you and I, I suspect, I shouldn't say I don't think, I suspect that you and I don't spend a lot of time thinking about what God is doing in my life today. Asking ourselves, what is God doing in my life at this very moment? Giving you and I a story to tell. And they left the church in joy and amazement and I think that this story is a story that's ongoing and is going to be most powerfully ongoing when you and I are able to share it with what we do and what we say and who we tell. I think that's why Mark left the story unfinished because he had an understanding and a hope that we would continue the story in our lives. Amen.
our Lord invites us to this table. He is the host and we are the guests. This meal is for all who wish a deeper relationship with Christ, who wish to know the presence of God and to share in the community of God's people. be seated. Let us pray together. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God most high. Eternal God who has created the heavens and the earth, giving breath to every living thing, we thank you for all the gifts of creation and for the gift of life itself. We thank you for making us in your own image, for forgiving us when we act as though you have no claim on us, and for keeping us in your steadfast care. We rejoice in Jesus Christ, the only one eternally begotten by you, who was born of your servant Mary and shared the joys and sorrows of life as we know it. We remember Christ's death. We celebrate Christ's resurrection. And in the beloved community of your church, we await Christ's return at the end of history. We take courage from the abiding presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst. We offer you our praise for women and men of faith in every age who stand as witnesses to your love and justice. With all the prophets, martyrs, and saints, and all the company of heaven, we glorify you. Amen. In the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. He blessed it, he gave thanks, and he broke it. This is my body, broken for you. Eat this, remembering me. And after the bread, he took the cup. This cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood for the forgiveness of your sin. As often as you drink it, you proclaim my death until I come again. Let us pray. Gracious God, we ask you to bless this bread and cup and all of us with the outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Through this meal, make us the body of Christ, the church, your servant people, 
that we may be salt and light and leaven for the furtherance of your will in all the world. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking at this table, that our eyes may be opened and we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst, in each other, and in all for whom Christ died. Alleluia, fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Alleluia, Jesus Christ is risen. The gifts of God for the people of God come, for all is now ready. This is the body of Christ. Take and eat.
This is the cup of salvation. Take and drink. Shall I seek Jesus and reign with him above, and shall hear the trumpet sound in that morning, and from the flowing fountain drink everlasting love, and shall hear the trumpet sound in that morning. Oh, shout with glory, I shall mount the the skies when I hear the trumpet sound in that morning. Oh, shout. With glory I shall mount the the skies when I hear the trumpet sounds of the trumpet, the trumpet, the trumpet. But now I am a soldier, my captain's gone before, and I hear the trumpet sound in that trumpet. He's giving my orders and he bids me never more till I hear the trumpet sound in that trumpet. Oh, shout with glory, I shall mount above the skies when I hear the trumpet sound in that morning. Oh, shout with glory, I shall mount above the skies when I hear the trumpet sound in that morning. In that morning, in that morning, in that morning. Where shall I be delivered from this vain world of sin? And shall hear the trumpet sound in that morn, in that morn, and with my blessed Jesus drink and the pleasures in, and shall hear the trumpet sound in that morn, in that morn. Oh, shout with glory, I shall mount above the skies when I hear the trumpet sound in that morning. Oh, shout with glory, I shall mount above the skies. When I hear the trumpet sound, sound in that morning, in that morning, in that morning, in that morning, in that morning. And we pray together. Eternal God, you have called your people from east and west and north and south to feast at the table of Jesus Christ. We thank you for Christ's presence and for the spiritual food of Christ's body and blood. By the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us faithful to your will. Go with us to the streets, to our homes and to our places of labor and leisure, that whether we are gathered or scattered, we may be the servant church of the servant Christ, in whose name we rejoice to pray. Amen.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace.